Welcome back everyone. Now we will solve another problem which will consider transmission line impedance. So far uh, what we have solved there is no transmission line impedance considered. So what is a transmission line? Uh, you know that power is generated at a generating stations but uh, you are absorbing that amount of power in your home. And obviously for simplicity let's say you are not generating your power in your home that means there are no generator in your home so this generator side uh, let's say uh, in Kaptai whereas uh, this load side let's say in Khulna so there is a lot of distance so there are some transmission liners used and there are some impedances associated with transmission lines since this is basically made of conductors so there are resistance inductance capacitance these are associated with it these are called transmission line parameters and probably you will read this in later courses in power systems or other courses as well so for now just consider that transmission line has also some sort of impedances so we can consider them as z line here here and here and for simplicity we are uh, assuming that all these z line are equal for our calculations so uh, since some sort of z line is involved that's why this eab that means the line voltage at generating end is not equal to the line voltage at receiving end since some associated loss will occur in this line impedances so that's why in our next math we will consider the z line so it is basically example 24.7 so here uh, a circuit is given this one so a y connected generator and a y connected load is connected but there is a impedance of a line so that's why this is the statement is transmission line of the three wire three phase system of the figure has an impedance of 15 ohm plus j20 that means this is the impedance of the transmission line so here is mentioned each transmission line so for three phase three wire connection obviously there are three transmission line since it is mentioned three wire so the system delivers a total power of 60 uh, 160 kilowatt this should be watt at 12,000 volt at a balanced three phase load with a lagging FP of 0.86. So, for this load end, it is giving at 12 kilo volt and also 160 kilowatt is supplying at this load. So, 160 kilowatt and also the power factor at this load end is 0.86 lagging as it mentioned in our problem statement. And now you need to determine the magnitude of the line voltage EAB of the generator. So here the magnitude of EAB is not given. So what is given? The available voltage at the load end. So we need to determine the EAB. And then uh, we need to determine FP of the total load applied to the generator. So FP that means the power factor. So power factor is given for the load end that is 0.86 that is available at the load end but for the source end that means at the generator end we need to determine the power factor and the third question efficiency of the system so there are some associated loss uh, with these uh, impedances in transmission line that's why there are some efficiency issues so how much power is being transferred to the load as compared to how much power is generated that's why the efficiency cal uh, came and we need to calculate that as well so let's focus on so these are given first of all the line impedance was given 15 plus 20 j we can write it at z line so if we convert it to polar form so it is just uh, 25 angle 53.13 and then the total power of the uh, load which was 160 kilowatt it was given and also the available voltage at the load 12 kv it was given and the load side uh, cost theta that is the power factor it was 0.86 this was written so all of this information was written in this uh, problem statement and also in this circuit so from here these are our uh, given parameters now in question a we need to determine the magnitude of the eab so first consider a single phase so uh, 
for a single phase let's say this is the generating end and EAN phase voltage is being generated and then it is being supplied to the load end and there is a transmission line impedance which is 15 ohm and 20 ohm inductance so this is a simplest circuit now if you apply a KVL that is the Kharshoff voltage law so we can write EAN then minus V line minus this VAN that is the voltage available at load end equal to zero we can write it and remember one thing this is vector quantities so remember this these are all phasor quantities or vector quantities so obviously this is not just a magnitude not just phase so this is a vector quantity and I will recommend you to uh, use the vector notation that means here is a horizontal bar and also here is a horizontal bar as well and uh, this problem basically came from the boil state book so if you notice there this is written here in bold letters so that means these are obviously vector quantities that means we need to consider consider both magnitude and phase so then uh, we can write EAN equal to V line plus VAN then uh, we also can line uh, write V line equal to I line into Z line so we need to use uh, calculate that V line right so here the impedance is given so we know that voltage is equal to current multiplied by impedance so we can say the current uh, through this impedance is I line so now it is I line into Z line and since it is a Y connection so this same amount of line current is being delivered to the load so that's why this I line is also equal to IAN so now it is IAN into Z line and our VAN was previously available so uh, in our question A it was asked EAB right so EAB basically the line voltage and we know that for Y connection line voltage is basically root 3 times of phase voltage so we just uh, you know show the expression of phase voltage here so the line voltage will be just root 3 multiplied by that phase voltage so let's calculate uh, different components of our previous equation so we need to calculate the VAN so VAB was given right VAB if you notice in this circuit VAB was 12 kilovolt it was given so if you want to calculate the phase voltage that is the VAN or V5 so we can write VAB over root 3 so now it is 6936.42 volt and then uh, at our load side total power absorbed was given also the power factor was given so we can use our uh, expression that was 3 V5 I5 cos 5 so uh, we know that the total power 3 V5 I5 into cos 5 from where we can write the I5 equal to our total power divided by 3 V5 into cos 5 into load so total power was given on 60 kilowatt and then the 3 and V5 we already calculated it here 6936.42 and the power factor at a load end was given in question 0.86 lagging so if you put that values and then if you calculate so the magnitude of I5 is found which is 8.94 so this is just the magnitude and remember I mentioned that this expression must be a vector equation that's why you need to calculate both phase and magnitude so how can we calculate the phase so we know that uh, the phase angle so our cos phi was given 0.86 so from where we can calculate the phase that is cos inverse 8.86 and it appears 30.868 degree and then uh, you know that this is a lagging power factor it was given in question it was written here if you notice closely here lagging a p of 0.86 since it is lagging that means we need to put a minus sign in front of that angle 30.86 here so that's why the minus is given and this is our you know vector component that is our a vector current equation so now uh, all components have been delivered so if we put these values in our uh, previous expression this is vector equation again I am mentioning so that's why you need to use this uh, both vector and both magnitude and phase and then you will find the EAN so this is also a vector 
so it has both magnitude and phase so from where we can calculate the eab that means our line voltage and we know the line voltage is basically root 3 multiplied by the phase voltage so it appears as just like this eab 12358.26 volt so it was asked in first question and the second question was the uh, power factor at generator side so at generator side uh, first of all we can write the total generated power is being absorbed by load and the lines so previously uh, it was shown here that the total generated voltage is absorbed in line and is V A and that is at load. So total generated power was absorbed in line voltage and in uh, load side. So similarly we can say that total generated power will be absorbed in load and in transmission power because there are, are no other such components to absorb power. So that's why we can write the PT generated that means the total power generated is equal to load total power plus lines total power. So load total power was already given in question which was 160 kilowatt and then the total line power we can write since we have three lines. So each line have uh, real power we know real power is I square R right. So for three lines since all the resistance are equal so we can write 3 i line square into r line so uh, this e sort of equation is already given in previous power equation so you can understand this so 3 i line square r line and remember this is just a resistance not the impedance so from where we will calculate the generated power and since the generated power is calculated again we can use the power equation which was uh, root 3 ELIL cos phi cos theta again if you want to use the three uh, you know the phase component that is the uh, let's say E phase uh, I phase uh, cos theta this is also fine uh, you will also get the same answer so you can use uh, any equation either line component or phase component so in this equation so we already derived this generated power and all also this line uh, voltage is already uh, derived here uh, in question number A. So we derive the line, line voltage available. And then uh, also the line current was uh, uh, found in previously 8.94. So if we put all those values, so then the FV at generated side is available 0.856. So this was asked in question number B and our final question which was question number C where it is asked to calculate the efficiency and we know that efficiency basically power output over power input. So what is the power output we can say power delivered to the load and power input that means the power is supplied from the generated side. So we already calculated both the PT load and PT generated. PT load basically was given in question so it was on 60 kilowatt and the generated power which was uh, you know we have uh, solved it here so this one 163596.55 watt so if we put those values and it appears 0.978 so we can write it 97.8% efficiency so that's all thank you everyone